So Amanda's up next, and you can see the title of her talk there, Veils and Sensors, an Artistic Intervention with Archival Moving Image Material. And Amanda is from the University of Bedfordshire. So if, Amanda, if we can hear you, it's all yours. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you fine. Yep, right. So we'll see how we go with this at the moment. I'm trying to get up some video Don't as well. Camera on, that would be great if you could. Trying to find my Zoom. Disappeared. <laughs> Bear with me. I might have to unshare. We can see you. That's great. Thanks, Amanda. Sorry. No, that's Sorry. okay. Just there feel free go. to share everything. Perfect. All right. See me, you can see the slides. Um, okay, so uh, the, giving some context to this work, it's basically a practice-based research that looks at uh, the reproduction and translation properties of digital media technologies, in particular in relation to moving image documents. So it's looking at a kind of an art historical and media archaeological approach um, uh, to investigate practices of duplication and translation and their findings, which are also a basis for artistic intervention. So the, the idea is to look at how these approaches lend themselves to this kind of the exploration of the material trace of, of gestures and digital moving image materials. And this is through an interplay of artistic strategies and the development of technological devices and software. And gestures in this context, we take the art historical example, which I'll talk about in a moment, or say the Renaissance perspective for painting and the Renaissance workshop, where perspective machines were developed by artists and engineers. These are the, it creates a kind of culture of practice as well as technologies. So it's technologies, practices, techniques that then impact upon the kind of techno cultural environment. So the aim is to look at how artistic design strategies and approaches uh, can facilitate an understanding of the digital dimension of moving image documents. Um, and the kind of quick and short of it is uh, my aim is to, to build a gestural optical printer. Uh, so what do I mean by moving image documents this time? Uh, so we have an example hopefully here that will play. Um, and this is a, a short uh, clip um, that is an ectochrome, uh, Kodak ectochrome piece. Um, and uh, it's the type of materials that I've been working on that came to me uh, by a, a wider study around uh, kind of digitization of archival materials in the deer store study. Uh, that we carried out in 2017 and 2018. Uh, but I'll come back to that, but I wanted to first of all explore this idea, uh, this framework that I was trying to build in order uh, to begin uh, artistic intervention around this idea of a, um, a gestural um, optical printer. Um, so looking at the art historical context, um, the one of the kind of main examples that permeates this idea um, I'm looking at duplication to uh, machines. And Bernhard Sigart's uh, research in this area concerned, first of all, with, uh, with design, um, and his aim is to resist the notion of the artist as the center of the creative impulse, but look at how technologies, materialities, codes, and visualization strategies made kind of permissible the idea of design. And the Renaissance workshop used mechanical means of projection to copy drawing onto surfaces. So you might know this picture um, is kind of the classic uh, Dura uh, duplication machines. The artist would use uh, a vela or a, a veil to trace the outline of an object on a wall or windows, uh, seeing that object and the world divided into a grid through its horizontal and vertical vectors. Dura, Alberti, Leonardo all constructed similar developments of the Velo, produced images with perspective 
techniques that use charcoal and powder, punctuation of holes and cloth to help produce guiding lines. And these techniques were not just good reproduction, but they also disciplined the artist's eye and hand. So these practices involved hosts of assistants working on frescoes and paintings, and all included those who were specialists in drawing particular elements such as clouds, skies, and backgrounds. So this is a trace of material culture that highlights drawing as a medium uh, that calls into existence um, workshops, collaborators, specialists, um, but also becomes an instrument for disciplining the body by offering control and correction mechanisms in the art of drawing. So what would be the equivalency um, in moving image? And here's an image of the Kineta archival scanner. Um, and in the context of cinema, uh, copying film has developed through a number of different technology pra technological practices. But duplication is a significant factor in formalizing what cinema is, particularly because of the concern for pirating or duping, or duping from film. The, the notion of the legal copy or original document poses the question of who made copies and how they copy. So reproduction, in a sense, falls into the category of professional and amateur practices, or domestic or commercial. Um, and this is an important tension when I'm thinking about this idea for myself of creating this kind of gestural optical printer. The optical printer, um, in this sense, is the, uh, is the very kind of first basic form of duplicate, one of the first forms of duplication. Not the only one in film, um, but it's one that uses a camera and projector in a network in order to reproduce um, and create particular types of effect. So the arrival of scanning is a development of the optical printer, because it's much more gentler on the treatment of film materials um, uh, and is able to still output, say, 35 millimeter film. Um, scanning works differently in the process of the, say, the contact printer or the optical printer, because of course it creates a digital file. And here the camp scanner, its important elements become the source of light that illuminates the film, the refraction of the optical system here to be focused on the center, it's composed by a set of independent photosensitive elements, which correspond to the pixels of the digital representation. The digital scanner stores color information in three values, for example, RGB, uh, YUV, gains correct color through the three digital images that correspond, correspond to specific spectral regions of the visible range. The, the aim of digitization in film, or at least one aim for film, is the way, um, is the way in which uh, one can get the most accurate reproduction of film colors. And then they can then be transmitted digitally to an image projected on the screen. And it is in this translation that highlights the major differences for the optical and contact form of reproduction with that of scanning. So part of the materials I'm looking at came from this large study of scanners um, that was done by the Diastil project. Um, and it was an important study for archival purposes because it became apparent that the problem with commercial scanners um, is they performed well in scanning kind of subtractive three color processes um, as that kind of represented the most dominant technology since the 50s in film production. Um, so it reflected kind of the, reflect, uh, the kind of the bulk of film heritage that one might see. But the problem then becomes when you talk about um, uh, kind of the other types of film materials that actually weren't so standardized and how you could um, find uh, ways in which you could scan that material accurately. As the kind of generic broad book standardization of the scanning process you couldn't um, didn't have space to deal with these peculiarities. So, um, yeah, for archival purposes, the stand film can cannot capture or render variation on the elements of film uh, practice. And that's akin to uh, the problem of the drafts of the assistants or the associates in the notion of the Renaissance workshop and novella. There's something that perhaps is missing from this conversation um, about trying to replicate or to reproduce and to duplicate for purposes of, of the archive, um, uh, moving image documents um, when they don't have the full range um, of materials that they're able to access. 
So in this study, they were judging um, the various different abilities of scanners to handle different types of materials. Um, and they, uh, the analysis points were trying to find the operational traces of what worked well, given uh, this kind of network that had to occur uh, by working through this machine between the operator, the operator's knowledge in the machine and the, the nature of the material that they were using. So the outputted files represented this ingested knowledge um, of that scanner operator know-how. That color depth, sprocket holes, distances marked in the border of frames, and damaged films kind of came together um, uh, uh, to give kind of answer to uh, both a material problem and a cultural concern. Um, but what was also really interesting in this study, likewise in thinking about the Renaissance workshop, is the way in which um, archival film um, and this type of digitization process also produces a subject, not only in the document that is outputted, uh, but also in the techniques, workflows that are elaborated for the use of this type of technology. So in that sense, what does an artistic intervention mean? Well, much of my work um, is, uh, is focused around kind of artists on the video and particularly um, one really important part in the conversation around our film um, is the 1969 film Tom Tom the Piper Son um, uh, uh, by Ken Jacobs. And this is a film where he took the 1905 original Tom Tom the Piper Son, um, which was uh, one of the kind of earliest um, films produced in America. Um, and he interrogates this film. It's originally a 10 minute film, which um, Jacob used to kind of source materials and turned it into a kind of hour and 55 minute expo exposition of the material. And he re-photographed um, the material, he slowed it down, he sped it up um, and looked at the kind of individual elements that composed the notion um, of, of, of the film. And so this becomes an important basis for thinking about um, the, the, the possibility of the revelatory process of an artistic intervention. Uh, for me, the Jacobs approach was a kind of performative um, optical printer. It would be easy enough just to duplicate and, and in a sense, edit the film uh, through whatever technological means he had at the time, but he also performed it. Um, because he didn't use a kind of traditional optical printer. Um, he had to um, fashion a kind of amateurish uh, projection mechanism. So how does that feed in uh, to the work that I've been doing? So with a concern for things such as um, color and color depth um, um, around this idea of um, pulling out data from material. I've been working in touch designer uh, to produce a series and set of tools um, that could be um, uh, interly, uh, uh, could be, uh, be utilized within a live environment. Um, and in order to attempt at uh, looking at how uh, we can now performatively think about um, exploring and visualizing um, moving image documents. And so this also includes kind of visualizing within 3D environments. Uh, while I can't show you the in camera or in headset view, um, I wanted to show um, some of the kind of outputs that I've been getting. Um, so, uh, here, hopefully you can see this video, uh, not much going on seemingly. This is the kind of uh, color picker, uh, which allows you to um, stop a frame and pull out a row of colors um, and, and export those out. So it allows you to start to think about um, drawing out gesturally some of that information by just uh, touching the image. 
but we also have um, the anaglyph uh, maker. What's interesting within this is again, um, you can input any uh, material. Um, uh, and again, these concerns, particularly at this moment in time, are looking at depth and color. Um, uh, it allows you to vary um, the left and the right, I feel, um, uh, interactively, uh, which is an important uh, element when one is dealing with different types of film material uh, that vary the different uh, color modes. Um, and uh, while I'm kind of running out of time, uh, the kind of output that's possible, uh, uh, for example, in this kind of beginnings of the, the, the short film that starts to take on all of those elements and a feedback loop between utilizing the tool uh, within an interactive environment, outputting uh, the elements, um, and in a sense, stitching them together, editing them together uh, within a film. Um, and starting to uh, relate this feedback between um, uh, this kind of intervention that Ken Jacobs work does to think about this revelatory practice um, and this tension between the kind of archivist um, as a formal profession um, and the amateurish or artistic intervention in seeking out information um, from the moving image. Oh, and so it is with that, I will end uh, my presentation. Thank you so much, Amanda. Fascinating talk. Um, and I love I love the old school aspects of this and uh, the relevance for today. Um, we don't have any questions in the Q and A, and in the interest of keeping to time, I think I'm going to ask you to stop sharing your screen, and then we can uh, move on to the next presentation. I'm going to desperately try and stop sharing as quickly as possible. Worked.